my name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a target individual. Um, every time I see this image, it makes me cry. Every time I think about this man, this son of God, I break out in tears. I, I can't help it. Um, and I've been trying to understand why that is. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, I come up with all kinds of answers. Oh, possibly because I have so much pain and repressed emotion and la di da di da that, you know, anything about any Just keyboards. Thought it was a laptop in the garbage. I found one that worked before. Um, you know, maybe that's what's making me cry. No, I don't think that's fully it. I think that somewhere, somewhere, uh, what a drag. Um, a friend of mine is moving out of his garage. It was completely packed to the ceiling with stuff, and now it... Anyway, um, somebody bought the place and throwed them all out. Anyway, you know, if it's not that, then it's got to be something more. And, you know, I venture to say that perhaps it is... I even say this somehow a recognition uh, you know I, I, listen I've lived my life for 47 years or 48 or however freaking old I am and thought I had a clue thought I was in control thought I had plans for my life, thought I was going to build a career, thought I was going to, you know, and no matter how hard I tried and even actually achieved some of these goals, they were quickly destroyed, <laughs> smashed to the ground. And there are several reasons for this. One, I wasn't fully capable of managing the, the apex of those goals. I wasn't cut out, you know, I wasn't, uh, also everybody who supported me in those goals and partnered with me in those goals abandoned me, um, and then people came in to make sure that nothing was left of my fortune, of my business, of my recording studio, of my dreams, of my, and the other theme through my life uh, besides this struggle to overcome, you know, whatever deficits that I was born with and deal with the reactions of those who, you know, whose job it was to help me or not help me, however the case may be. Uh, forgot what I was saying. Anyway, there were people who came along and made sure that, you know, nothing I was going to do was ever going to work out again. And for seven years, nothing I did ever worked out. I would talk to people about ideas and they'd be like, yeah, yeah. And I'd come back the next day, they're like, uh, sorry, I don't know. Nobody wanted anything to do with me. It went so far as, as you know, I went to the, to the magic store to ask them about spells and curses. And even there, I was greeted with complete, they wanted nothing to do with me. They took a look at me, they listened to what I said, they said, sorry, we can't help you. Goodbye. Kind of weird, right? You think that the Satanists and magicians would be, you know, all over it, but no. So, uh, somehow I got myself crossed up in some weird-ass network of, of 
wackos who seem to be running things. Um, anyway, back to the original question. Um, see, I don't know what to believe anymore. In the same way that I had an extremely powerful, life-changing dream that turned me into an anti-social drug addict as a child, which I now realize was the doing of whoever these people were, the dentist, the orthodontist, whoever they called in after giving me the sodium pentothal and putting me into what is called twilight amnesia, where, uh, uh, twilight, uh, not amnesia, uh, sedation, where you have retrograde amnesia and uh, forward amnesia. You don't remember what's going to happen or what did happen around the, the application of the drug. You are almost asleep, however, you will respond to commands because you're still awake and aware. I mean, your subconscious or something, your unconscious, your, your, I don't know how it works. I'm sure the neurocognitive people can, can clue you in on this, but twilight uh, sedation. And then told me, you know, a hypnotic induction you're going down a long, dark tunnel, and when you arrive at the end of the tunnel, there's a bright light, and you enter into a beautiful place where everybody is fun and happy and nice. And if you want to be like them, too, and have this happiness and joy, all you have to do is use drugs. And I woke up going, yes, the answer, I found the answer. You know, a little 13-year-old kid. And, you know, so then, uh... I got set up, I got thrown out of school, I got, you know, I did all kinds of shit people told me to do and thinking it was my own idea and got myself labeled as a whatnot so that anything from now on that these people would do to me would be covered, you know? It's a great way to get away with this. Anyway, there was that dream. Then, another dream, this brings me back to the first point, that I was in a war, quite possibly Vietnam, because I was born in 66, and we were uh, under heavy mortar fire, mortar rounds, machine gun fire, mortars coming in, boom, 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 blowing up, and one of the platoon members was hit, was, you know, over there in some bushes, and the mortars are raining down, bam, bam, bam. It was like, come on, forget about him, he's dead, let's go. And I said, no, absolutely not. I'm not going anywhere without this guy because nobody gets left behind. And I run over there and I pick him up and I throw him over my shoulders and boom! Mortar round explodes right in front of me, blows my head open, and I go black, blank. I wake up. What a fucked up dream that was. And then throughout my whole childhood, young, young childhood, I would be left at the library for hours while my mother and father did whatever they needed to do. And I would look at these time life books uh, of war and warfare and, you know, aircraft bombings. And, and I knew, I knew that I had done that or seen that or somehow experienced that. Shit. Loving guns, thinking they were amazing, fantastic. You know, a little kid, loving it. My parents are like, you know, buy me toy guns and paper guns I cut out of magazines. And, and then one day, they switched, click, and they decided that no, this isn't good for you. And we're taking them all away, and you can't have any more. And, and I knew all this stuff about weapons and munitions and, you know, bladed weapons and you know all the different ways to kill somebody and, and uh, you know, I can't fight or shit but I knew all this stuff that I should not know and I went to camp once and was allowed to fire 22s and I won all these awards and you know and it seems to me that it's possible that I've done this before you know and 
So I think about it, if I was in a war and killing people, you know, what would happen on my death? Anyway, ten minutes is up. Thanks for watching. God bless you.